How do you speak sufficiently about Goldie Bragman as a CRNA trailblazer and articulate the incredible legacy as a nurse anesthesia educator and the influence she made for generations? You simply echo the sentiments from the champion behind Goldie Bragman, the pioneer herself, and nurse anesthetists from different historical times on how she impacted them in their own journey. First, I would like to thank Dr. Helen Mayer, head of the anesthesia department at Harlem Hospital for being a champion for Goldie Bragman in 1949. Dr. Mayer opened the door of opportunity for Ms. Bragman to start a nurse anesthesia program when other schools would not do it simply based on the color of her skin. This decision would propel a profound legacy in nurse anesthesia education and the profession. In the 1965 Harlem Hospital School of Anesthesia yearbook, Enter to Learn, Leave to Serve motto in English and in Latin was prominently placed across the door and set the tone of the transformational change nurse anesthesia students would endure at the completion of the program. In the yearbook, one of the pages titled We Had a Dream, in summary, is a written historical account of the reason for such a program. Ms. Bragman asserts in 1949, there were few schools of anesthesia that accepted non-whites, males, or foreigners. She disclosed, we then started working to make that dream a reality. In 1950, the Harlem Hospital School of Anesthesia was organized. In May of 1951, the first graduates of the school were admitted to the qualifying examination administered by the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists. During that time, most nursing schools were segregated and nurse anesthesia faculty of color were not able to be hired in majority programs to achieve the requisite teaching experience. In 1965, there were 11 Harlem Hospital School of Anesthesia graduates. Five of the graduates were from Trinidad, Liberia, Virgin Islands, Korea, and Greece through the United States Student Exchange Program. But it was Goldie Bragman who made an intentional act throughout her tenure from 1949 to 1985 as the program director of Harlem Hospital School of Anesthesia. She consistently admitted diverse cohorts and hired nurse anesthesia faculty of color with no teaching experience who made a difference in the program. These nurse nurses of color with aspiration of becoming a faculty member simply expressed the desire and passion to teach nurse anesthesia students. As a result, the graduate nurse anesthesia students passed the qualifying examination by these dedicated educators. Why is this important in nurse anesthesia education today? It's the connectivity of educators that was prominent in the success of the students' progression in the program. Today, I think we can learn from these intentional acts of courage of opportunity that can be embraced in graduate nurse anesthesia programs. Many CRNAs of color use Goldie Bragman as a guiding light of what they too can accomplish in nurse anesthesia. And while there are many, here's a snapshot of just a few whom she influenced. In 1971, Sheila Perdue, a graduate of Norfolk Community Hospital of Anesthesia would follow in Goldie Bragman's footsteps. Sheila would become the education director where she was trained with subsequent student cohorts that reflected the community. In 1975, Gary Phelps was a nurse anesthesia student at the Pennsylvania Hospital School of Anesthesia. He was the first and only African-American nurse anesthesia student in his cohort. As a student, he was not aware of the visionary leader until he met another African-American CRNA at an annual ANA meeting in 1983. As an attendee, he met and spoke with Bobby Turner, a 1965 graduate of the Harlem Hospital School of Anesthesia. Gary Phelps, found it all too often to be the only CRNA of color at his place of employment as he administered anesthesia and experienced tremendous social isolation. After 1983, he looked forward to attending the ANA annual meetings for the connectivity he longed for that was absent in his educational experience. In 1984, John Bing, fellow of the American Academy of Nursing, was the only African-American male nurse anesthesia student in his cohort at George Washington University. Today, John would become an owner of an independent anesthesia practice for over 25 years and former ANA board member. As per John, diversity is often embraced but not part of the strategic implementation implementation plan at the institutional level, so I would continue her legacy at the grassroots level to affect change like Goldie Bragman has done. In 2003, yours truly, a curious African-American nurse anesthesia student had the audacity to inquire about the racial and ethnic composition of the nurse anesthesia profession to another prolific 
nurse anesthesia educator, Dr. Arthur Swirling. The poster project on diversity in nurse anesthesia would evolve into a nonprofit mentoring program after meeting Goldie Bragman as a nurse anesthesia student at an ANA annual meeting and finding her purpose in life. In 2007, Fred Peterson, the only African-American male nurse anesthesia student at the University of Pennsylvania, created a poster display about diversity leadership in nurse anesthesia with Goldie Bragman featured as part of an assigned project. Fred's assignment lifted his motivation to be excellent at his practice and continue outreach in the community. Dr. Sonia Moore, an African-American program director at Case Western Reserve University Nurse Anesthesia Program and ANA Board of Director member states, I heard about past President Goldie Bragman in 1996 upon graduation and thought, wow, what a legacy of accomplishment to guide CRNAs such as myself. Her courage in overcoming adversity have inspired me as a program director to uplift those who think their dreams are impossible. Dr. Erica Moore, an African-American assistant program director at Emory University Nurse Anesthesia Program states, Ms. Bragman was a true icon and trailblazer for many. Ms. Bragman inspired me to use my own testimony to help encourage others. Therefore, following in her footsteps, I chose education to motivate to educate and to mentor others who may share similar aspirations. Dr. Martina Cruz is the Director of Clinical Education at Webster University Nurse Anesthesia Program and one of four Hispanic PhD CRNAs in the country. Thank you, Dr. Cruz, for spreading the word to, to CRNAs of color to embark on the PhD journey in the D Diversity in Nurse Anesthesia Mentorship Program events. Dr. Ruth Petros would become the first black CRNA certified in non-surgical pain management in 2019. Dr. Petros often thought of the barriers Goldie Bragman navigated and conquered on her own that paved the way for her to do the same. Dr. Edwin, Edwin Oroki, assistant professor at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, was selected as one of 50 Health Disparities Research Institute scholars in 2019 by the National Institute of Health. 2007, Goldie Bradman was the guest speaker at a diversity CRNA event and called for more CRNAs of color to pursue the PhD degree. Dr. Oroki is one of 19, excuse me, is one of nine black CRNAs with PhDs in the country, with five more currently enrolled in a PhD program. Captain James Winters, graduate of the University of Southern Mississippi Nurse Anesthesia Program and active duty United States Air Force officer states, as a CRNA, I love what I do. I couldn't imagine it doing anything else. It is because of the sacrifices and commitment made by Goldie Bragman that I and so many others are able to enjoy the profession as we know it today. The Florida International University Nurse Anesthesia Program is the epitome of the Harlem Hospital School of Anesthesia motto, enter to learn, leave to serve, of nurse anesthesia faculty and student cohort that reflects the community. This program is under the direction of Dr. Derek Glimpf and Dr. George Valdez as chair and assistant chair of nursing anesthesiology, respectively. Dr. Prudentia Worth, as program director of Wayne State University Nurse Anesthesia Program, earned her PhD in 1995 and was the recipient and only CRNA of color as the ANA Program Director of the Year awarded in 2001. As an exemplary educator herself, Goldie Bradman would have said, bravo, Dr. Worth, bravo. Dr. Michelle Gonzalez, an inaugural nurse anesthesia program director at the University of Arkansas Medical Sciences, shared sentiment poses this question. What did Goldie Bragman do? She laid the grand groundwork that allowed the door to remain open for others, and she was a trailblazer in turbulent times as a woman who believed that it was possible. Hawaii. Hawaii was the retirement state and final resting place for Goldie Bragman. In the words of Dr. Tara LeBang, a graduate of the University of Maryland Nurse Anesthesia Program, who was of Hawaiian and Filipino descent, was most grateful for the connectivity with an icon such as Goldie Bragman. Dr. LeBang, lasting and loving message, mahalo and aloha for all you have done for Nurse Anesthes. Rest in aloha kapuna, Goldie Bragman. In addition to her contributions in nurse anesthesia education, I would like to share the list of exemplary accomplishments by Goldie Bragman. In 1958, Goldie Bragman would deliver anesthesia to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at Harlem Hospital from a near fatal stabbing assassination attempt while he was at a book signing ceremony in Harlem, New York. Goldie Bragman was elected president of the New York Association of Nurse Anesthes in 1959. 
She introduced workshops on regional anesthesia and was one of the first educators to teach regional anesthesia. She also introduced workshops on quality assurance and helped write the first ANA quality assurance manual. She remains the first and only African-American ANA president from 1973 to 1974. In 1983, she was the Helen Lamb Outstanding Educator Award. And also she was the recipient of the 1995 ANA Agatha Hodgins Award. Ms. Bragman, thank you for your unwavering strength and courage to the nurse anesthesia community. May God bless the Bragman family. In the next two slides, I ask that you remain silent to reflect on Goldie Bragman's legacy.